During World War II, the United States lacked a specialized sniper rifle and had no sniper school. The M1903A4 sniper rifle was created from the M1903A3 rifle to respond to this need. It was standardized in January 1943 and production increased by the middle of the year. The rifle was used in small numbers in the North African campaign and the invasion of Sicily. American snipers with M1903A4 rifles were active in the rugged Italian terrain by the beginning of 1944. Additionally, significant numbers of the rifles were stockpiled for the upcoming invasion of France. This appeared to be the normal progression of another American military firearm success story. Unfortunately, that would not be the arc of the M1903A4's history. While most purpose-built sniper rifles are highly refined precision instruments, the 03A4 seems rather crude by comparison. American troops were skeptical of the new weapon, particularly after practicing shooting revealed the rifle's unimpressive, just above average accuracy. The addition of a telescopic sight to an ordinary battle rifle might make it look the part, but only its battlefield performance will distinguish it as a sniper's weapon. In his book Shots Fired in Anger, Lt. Col. John B. George gives us a combat infantryman's assessment of the M1903A4 in the Pacific Theater of Operations in China Burma India. We were not issued sniper rifles in time to use them on Guadalcanal. The model sent out later with a weaver scope and two groove barrel could hardly be called more than reasonable excuses for sniper arms. Since the gun on the range proved to be such a sad sort of a cluck, we didn't make much use of it in Burma, where we finally did get it. I saw it used a few times under conditions which called for any old kind of rifle, shooting Japanese across a 50-yard wide stream. In this perhaps it did a little better than an O3, not quite so well as a Garand. The Weaver scope, plenty good enough for sporting use, just wasn't the instrument to give to a sniper at the front. An M1, with its increased rate of fire, would be much better for sniping than the so-called sniper rifle. George identifies the root cause of the issues with the M1903A4, which go far beyond the basic mechanics of the rifle itself. It was obvious from the outset that little was being done, on proper staff levels, to develop a good sniper weapon or even to train snipers. The M1903 sniper rifle, World War II version, was a substitute measure, and a poor one at that. It placed a delicate and optically inadequate weapon of only moderate accuracy in the hands of troops untrained in its use and even that at a very late date. What we needed was a good, sturdy scope on the M1, and we didn't get it until the war was over. The new United States sniper rifle was based on the M1903A1 rifle, but the 03A1 was no longer in production, so the no frills M1903A3 was chosen instead. Many complaints about the M1903A4 came from combat troops, especially about the M73B Weaver scope being optically inadequate and not rugged enough for combat duty. The rifle could only be loaded with one cartridge at a time due to the low position of the scope. Special ammunition was not provided for the M1903A4, and the Weaver scope offered poor performance in low light conditions and was prone to fogging. Additionally, the scope was fragile, and its windage screws were too easy to damage or lose. Without the scope, the M1903A4 was completely sightless, as no iron sights were fitted. The M1903A4 sniper rifle was not particularly accurate, and its value was questionable. However, it was widely available and served the troops when needed. Over 28,000 M1903A4S were produced by Remington Arms and were distributed to U.S. Army units through 1944. Some also went to the Marines by the end of the war in the Pacific and continued in service into the Korean War. The M1903A4 even survived in Army inventory into the 1970s.